Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a number theory problem. P is prime and we have n to the fourth power minus n squared plus one equals P. We're gonna be looking for P values and n is an integer. So I'll be presenting two methods because I'll be factoring n to the fourth power plus n squared plus one in two different ways. Let's start with the first method. For my first method, which is a little different than the normal method, I'm going to go ahead and multiply n to the fourth plus n squared plus one by something. So when you look at an expression like this, if you say, suppose n squared equals t, then you get something like this, t squared plus t plus one. And the presence of something like this should always, almost always remind you difference of two cubes. Because if you multiply this by t minus 1, you get t cubed minus 1, which is called a difference of two cubes. Make sense? So that's what we're going to use here. Let's go ahead and multiply n to the fourth plus n squared plus 1 by n squared minus 1. So in this case, we're basically using this identity but replacing t with n squared. So this becomes n squared minus 1. And their product is going to be from difference of two cubes, n to the second power to the third power, which is n to the sixth minus 1. You could also find the same result by distributing this over the second expression. So n to the sixth minus n to the fourth plus n to the fourth, they cancel out. And then you get minus n squared plus n squared, they cancel out. At the end, you get minus 1. So... But you can't just multiply an expression by something, right? You kind of have to divide as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with this expression. And we're going to go ahead and multiply it by n squared minus 1 and divide by the same thing. Make sense? Okay. So now it's balanced. The only problem is n should not equal 1 or negative 1. Well, here's the thing. If n is equal to 1, this expression is undefined, but at the end, you're going to see what happens. Anyways, so by multiplication, we get the following from here, n to the 6th power minus 1 divided by n squared minus 1. At the end, it's going to equal to p, which is our prime number. We're looking for that, but let's go ahead and factor this in a different way. So remember, this came from difference of two cubes. Now we're going to factor it using difference of two squares. If you factor n to the 6th, so you, you're kind of thinking about it as n to the 6th as n cubed squared instead of n squared cubed. Make sense? So that's the switch. So let's go ahead and write it as n cubed squared minus 1 over n squared minus 1. Now we can go ahead and use difference of two squares, n squared plus 1, n squared minus 1. Great. Uh, what about the bottom? <laughs> well, the bottom is just going to be, by the way, I messed up. It's supposed to be n cubed, not n squared. Okay n cubed, okay, let's fix it real quick, n cubed plus 1 and n cubed minus 1. And at the bottom, we still have n squared minus 1. So as is, nothing cancels out, but if you go ahead and use sum of two cubes and use difference of two cubes here and difference of two squares, so kind of like a lot of formulas are being used, this formula, this first method is kind of complicated. It looks complicated, but it's actually very helpful to learn these identities. Anyways, so now let's go ahead and factor n cubed plus 1 as n plus 1 times n squared minus n plus 1 using sum of two cubes. And n cubed minus 1 can be written as n minus 1 times n squared plus n plus 1 using difference of two cubes. Now we're going to go ahead and divide it by n squared minus 1, but n squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares, so we can go ahead and write it as n plus 1 times n minus 1. This is really cool because now we can go ahead and simplify some of the things. n plus 1 cancels out, n minus 1 cancels out. And we end up with the factoring. So in other words, we started off with n to the fourth plus n squared plus 1, and we ended up with this. So n to the fourth plus n squared plus 1 can be written as n squared minus n plus 1 multiplied by n squared plus n plus 1. And remember, this is equal to p p is a prime number. So now, what do you know about prime numbers? Prime numbers have only two divisors, one and themselves. So p can only be factored into p times one or one times p. You can't do any other way, otherwise they wouldn't be prime. So this means, 
n squared minus 1, n squared n minus n plus 1, or n squared plus n plus 1, one of these have to be 1, and the other one has to be p. But notice that this one is smaller, right? So it has to be 1, and this one has to be p. So let's go ahead and set n squared minus n plus 1 equal to 1 and solve for n. And now we're going to plug it in here to find p. Or you can plug it in the original equation as well. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get n squared minus n equals 0. This is a very easy quadratic. By, you can solve by factoring. n times n minus 1 equals 0, which means n equals 0 and n equals 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at each p value. And from here, remember, p is n squared plus n plus 1. So if n is equal to 0, p must be 1. If n is equal to 1, p must be 3. But unfortunately, 1 is not prime. I say unfortunately, I don't know, maybe fortunately. So this is not going to work. We only end up with a single prime, which is p equals 3. And that is the answer. Make sense? OK, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. Remember I told you at the beginning that we were going to factor n to the fourth plus n squared plus 1 in two different ways. So the first method kind of used the six powers. And then the second method is just going to use perfect squares. So here's how the method works. And a lot of times this method is used. It's also used with Sophie Germain. Uh, we complete the square, especially with fourth power. This method works real well. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this expression, add n squared to it, because adding n squared is going to make it a perfect square. Hopefully you see what I see. And then subtract n squared. Of course, you can't just add it. We have to balance it out. OK, great. Now, the expression inside the parentheses can be written as n to the fourth plus 2n squared plus 1 and then minus n squared. We don't have to use parentheses. I just want to emphasize the fact that that's a special product. So now this is n squared plus 1 squared, and n squared is just n squared. Make sense? OK. Now this is difference of two squares. As you know, it's one of the most important formulas or identities in math. So we can go ahead and write it as n squared plus 1 plus n, and n squared plus 1 minus n equals p. And again, like before, we get the same idea. Let's go ahead and write these in standard form. From here, we get this equals 1, and this equals p, as before. And n squared minus n plus 1 equals 1 gives us n equals 0 or n equals 1, as before. We've done it already. And p equals n squared plus n plus 1. 0 doesn't help us. It doesn't give us a prime. But n equals 1 gives us p equals 3 as the only answer to this Diophantine equation. Yes, this is a Diophantine equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.